Greetings comrades, this is Yuri. Today we'll have a look at SAM Simulator. It's a kind of realistic to the switch free simulator from Hungary. This is going to be some kind of a how to play video. I will show you how to download the game, how to start it, set everything up and we'll try to have some fun. You can download the game from the website. I will put the link in the description below. The game allows you to control several Soviet SAM systems, such as S-75, S-125, and several others. All of them are implemented quite well. Below you can find the link to the game itself. And you should also download documentation, because it explains how to use each of the SAM systems. Of course I will show you something, but I cannot show everything, so there will be plenty of, re of room for your own research, so you will definitely need documentation, at least for reference. Also you may want to see some of the tutorial videos below. Honestly I don't like them very much, because they are let's say, too much by the book. I don't like them, because they do not really explain how the system works, actually. So, okay, let's go. Let's assume you've downloaded the game, installed it, and after you start, you can see the main menu. You can choose one of the same systems and a scenario to play. In practice mode you cannot fire any missiles, you can just practice using the radar. Leaf practice allows you to fire missiles on targets and there are also some close to real life scenarios which are also quite interesting. Today we will have a look at S75 DNA. It's quite a simple system. And we will have some leaf practice at other look field. As it is quite a large field and will allow us a significant time of target tracking. Let us start. We can choose the type of missile. Actually there is very little difference between them. And we will choose 12 missiles. Six of them will be already mounted on launchers. Six of them will be in reserve and will take some time to prepare. Now we need to set up the targets. So we will choose some medium to high altitude target let's say it will appear in three minutes at target also i want some kind of a balloon in four minutes another target maybe in seven minutes in 10 minutes and to make it a bit more interesting a target in 13 minutes but it will be a jamming target okay everything looks set up let's start so here is one of the control panels we have several panels which can be cycled with the keyboard. Actually I'm not gonna explain each of the windows because you can find this information in manual. I will start the system. This is the power button. I just switched on the power, switched to 
live mode. <clears throat> Switch the launchers to live mode. And also we switch the radar screens to antenna. Let's switch on the radar. To check the radar I'll move the antenna dish down and we can observe some ground clutter on the screen. This is, I call it clutter check. It means that everything is set up properly, my radar is working, I'm getting the reflections, so I'm ready to go. As we see on this screen there is no target yet. So we'll just have a look at this window and talk about what the buttons mean. So this is microphone which is not implemented because we have nobody to communicate with. These buttons are also used to address the microphone communication. Some alarm switch. It works. This one prepares missiles for action because missiles have limited time which they can stay on. It's related to some gyroscope issues. They cannot run for a long time. They are overheating, I suppose. So we'll prepare just three missiles for now. We can prepare six and we can prepare all missiles. Now below we have some inactive switches which are used for system functional control. It's also not implemented. This one we already, already engaged the live mode. We can switch to low altitude mode. It can be useful for low altitude targets. It's just more convenient. It's not a must to enable it, but it's, more, it's just more convenient because it moves the screens into a different mode, that's it. And we can also choose between different and missile fuse modes. We will use rub odd airway, it means working by radio fuse. Okay, now we see the target on the screen. We can also check it by this radar. Actually, you can click right or left mouse button to zoom in and out. You can see the target is here. Let's try to find it on our main acquisition radar. I'll just check the azimuth. Here it is, a bit there, a bit high. Yeah, here it is, approaching us. I will right click to lock it by azimuth, right click to lock by elevation, and right click to lock the distance. And I will also switch the. What do you call them? I also need to synchronize the launches with the radar, pushing this button. Okay. <clears throat> we can also switch uh, between different missile guidance methods. Three point is TT. It means that the missile will go just straight to the target and the missile will be always between the radar and the target. Upper means a half lead method. It will go to pre-calculated impact point. 
and K, it's the same with upper, but it will not go below the target altitude. I prefer using this one, at least in simulator, because it looks like the most accurate and the least sensitive to target maneuvers. So it's time to launch. We will launch one missile, I think. And we see it going. I will switch the radar to 75 kilometer mode to get better resolution. And let's just wait till the impact. Boom. We can see the reflection from missile debris. In this screen you can see that target velocity is dropping. Altitude is also dropping. So, it means that the target was successfully hit and the craft is going down. There is also a parameter display. It is actually the closest the target is going to get to our same system if it continues to fly straight ahead. Can be used to estimate the most convenient impact point. Now we will prepare all missiles because we may need them. Let's check the radar if we have any additional targets. Yes, we have another target. Let us rotate the dish. I would can't rotate because I didn't disengage tracking. Right click. Now we can rotate. Let's lower the dish. Yes. Oh. It's within 75 kilometers already, so we'll lock the target. Now let's try to fire two missiles with different guidance methods. I think it was quite effective in reality, because different guidance methods require different evasive maneuvers. And when you fire two missiles with different guidance methods, target will have a difficult time to evade the missile. So the impact point is within the envelope. Let's fire. I cannot fire another missile until the red light goes off. So as you see, the first missile is not between our system and the target, because it's using half lead mode. It goes to pre-calculated impact point, but uh, with some limitations, it can't go, go off more than 3 or 4 degrees. I don't remember exactly. Bang! And another bang. Yeah. The speed is going down. The altitude is going down. Nice shot. Oh, we've got another target already. The fourth one. Let's try a different target acquisition method. If you click the number, it will get highlighted. Disengage tracking. And we s switch vocal to. It means that uh, the target will be acquired from another system. And yeah, the dish rotated. Now we just need to switch to 150 kilometer mode and here we go the target is already visible all we need is just to lock it that's it three clicks target locked
nothing interesting about it. Okay, let's try a different fuse mode. There is 11 second mode, it means that the fuse will be engaged in 11 seconds after launch, because Robot RV engages the fuse just seconds before the impact to ensure that the missile is not activated by chaff or other source of uh, interference. 11 second mode is often used against jamming targets when we do not know the exact distance to the target, so it engages the fuse long in advance. Rub po Ada is the mode which disables the missile fuse and the missile will be detonated by command from our system. So let's try this now, but we also need to use, to enable this command on our system. We click this one, this one and this one. Three channels or three switches, better to say, for each of the missiles. And they have two positions. The bottom one is used for hot targets, which are approaching our station, and the upper position is used for receding targets, which are going away. So let's try this one and this one. The first missile should miss, the second one should hit perfectly. We'll use three-point guidance for both missiles. Launch. And launch again. Seventy-five kilometer mode for better resolution. Let's see how it works. So the first one explodes, but the velocity is not dropping. The second explodes and the velocity is going down. That's just because the first one exploded behind the target and didn't hit it. It was in the wrong mode. Okay, now we have a jamming target. Let's try this. Come on, oh, it doesn't rotate. I need to disable the target acquisition from a different system. Okay, here we go. A jamming target. We can lock it by elevation. We can lock it by azimuth, but we cannot lock it by distance. What do we do? We need to launch a missile without knowing the exact distance to the target. So we switch the fuse to 11 second mode. Is there anything else we can do? I don't think so. There are additional options implemented in S-75 Volkhov, but we have nothing for this particular system. So, we'll try to work with what we have. The missile should be in three-point mode, just because we cannot calculate the exact impact point. Now, we can set the approximate distance to target, but I think it makes no sense with this system. It makes sense with S-75 Volkhov. What else do we have? I'm afraid nothing. Just disable the command from station. That's it. We can, all we can do is just blind launch. 
hoping that the target is in range and when the missile comes close to the target it explodes with the radio fuse. Let's see. So... Why is it going sideways? What's wrong with it? Aha! Uh -huh. I suppose I need to put the distance as far as possible just for the missile not to, to lose control. Oh, I've got Azimuth turning. It means the target is very close to me already. Let's fire again. Honestly, I don't know what is happening right now. I should be hitting the target. But it's too close, I think. It's going around. As you see, it's north of us. Probably will miss it. It's too close. Oh no, we hit it. And as we hit, it stops jamming because the jammer is destroyed. We can lock it by distance, and we see velocity is going down, altitude is dropping, nice. Okay, and we have another target left. It's just a simple reflector. Let's try this. Actually, I rarely shoot balloons, so I don't know the right technique to shoot them. Let's try just re ordinary radio fuse mode, three-point guidance, that's it, launch. It's altitude. Altitude is 5 kilometers, zero velocity. Let's see what happens. We're almost there. Bang. Okay, velocity is increasing. Actually, the balloon is going down. Altitude is dropping. Yeah. It's hit. Nice. Let's try to hit it again with the half lead method. Launch. I hope the missile reaches the target before it falls to the ground, but... Oh, it takes forever to stabilize. And probably the missile will hit the ground. I'm not. <laughs> Oh, no. So close, but no. And by the way, we're locked to the ground. I cannot move it. To unlock it, I have to push this button. Yeah, here we go. That's it. We've spent all the targets. So we just switch off the system. It will show us the after action report. We can see details about all the missiles launched, all the hits, the miss distance. 
and the interesting thing we can save the report close it and open it in Google Earth for example that's how we do it file open then we go to the game folder it saves all reports to the game folder we choose GPS and we can open the GPX file create tracks and we do not want to adjust altitude to ground height because we have real altitudes and we want to see them okay and Google will bring us to Azure Look and we can see all our missiles fired it's quite nice actually it's not the best way but quite nice it is free so you get what you pay for but it's very good for a free piece of software okay now I prefer to switch animation speed to the slowest one and to have a limited trail display then we can just review what happened let's play that's our first target and here our missile goes bang missile exploded and we can actually see the details here miss distance 28 meters the missile fuse works at the distance of uh, 300 meters and uh, significant damage can be done at a distance of about 100 meters so 28 meters is pretty close it was a nice hit target is going down here is our next target let's see what happens we launched two missiles the first one had a half lead guidance method the second one had a three point method both of them hit the target the first one hit it perfectly just five meters miss distance the second one has 49 meters of miss distance probably because the target started dropping speed very rapidly and the missile had to follow up you see the trajectories are a bit different but I cannot say that one is better than another I can't say that half lead gives any significant advantage but half lead doesn't enable you to shoot jamming targets and it doesn't it is affected by target maneuvers very strongly because if a target makes even a small maneuver the calculated impact point can move very far away so honestly I can see no point in using half lead guidance method in the simulator in reality yes probably it had a lot of profit especially a combo with two missiles guided by different methods could be very effective so let's go on another target the third one so yeah the first missile missed and the second one scored a hit the miss distance is 74 meters because fuse control from the station is not as good is not as accurate as radio fuse in the missile but 74 meters is still quite a nice hit 
Let's go on with the final target. The first missile missed. Why did it miss? It should have hit. Hmm. Strange, but it missed. Yeah. Actually, in reality, the hit rate with three missiles was about 96 or 98 percent. So it was preferred to show to shoot three missiles at a single target. And I'm shooting only one. But the success rate in simulator is much higher than in reality. But still, it misses sometimes. Interesting. And missile 7 hit. With this distance just 40 meters. Nice. Actually, if you right click the trajectory, you can view the elevation profile. You can see the target speeds and altitudes. Interesting graphs, but they're a bit glitchy. You see this speed bump. I have no reason, I have no explanation for that. So you can also view the elevation profile of missiles. You can see that missile speed is blocky, which also doesn't correspond with reality. And after the engine goes out, the speed drops rapidly and stays, stays constant. Yeah, this is also not, not quite real. But you get what you pay for. It's a free simulator and even with these drawbacks, it's still quite, quite good and I've had a lot of fun with it. Oh, and we just forgot about the balloon. Oh yeah, it was a single, single missile hit. Miss distance zero meters. It exploded just inside. And this is the last missile. You see the wobbly trajectory. Yeah, and it hit the ground. Okay. I think that's it for today. If you like it, I can make more in-depth videos or try different same system. I don't know, actually it's my first video. I hope you enjoyed it. See you later.